Alright, I think it's time for another tube time. Okay, so on the battle scarred bench of previous tube time episodes, we have a level indicator tube and a brand new camera angle. Welcome to Tube Time on Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Yes, I've had a crazy idea and I've decided to put the tripod on the ceiling, as you can see. So we can now get an overhead shot of all the action happening on the battle scarred bench. As you can see, it suffered a bit from the previous tube time episodes. There's one bit there and another bit there and another bit there, but who cares? This is tube time. Well, in case you're wondering how I'm shooting this part of the video, when you can clearly see the camera that's viewing the action that's showing up on the computer screen. I got this camera here, which I'll probably do a review of later on. It was Donated by a friend, but yeah. Okay, so on the table today we have an indicator tube, and I've never wired one of these up before, so I'm going to see if I can make it work. Now, hopefully, I'll be able to get it working off my bench power supply, which um, I don't know if it can work on voltages as low as 40 volts, but we'll see. So I'll turn the bench power supply on. First of all, I'm going to bring up the filament voltage, so we get 6.3 volts. And for some reason, it is um, not reading anything. Although the filament's glowing, but it's not coming through onto the meter for some reason. Which is kind of strange. And do you know why? It's because this is the meter that's measuring the filament voltage, and I thought it was this one. Okay, so let's bring that up to 6.3 volts. Just around about there. Okay, let's bring up the high tension. I'm just going to put this on as high as it can go. Okay, so that's 47 volts, and I'm not seeing anything so we might need a bit more juice. So anyway, the current configuration is I've just got the power going into pin 6 and then I've got this 470k resistor connecting pin 6 to pin 7 and pin 9. I'm just going to turn out the lights and see if there's any sign of anything going on in there. Let's see if it's even glowing even in the slightest. Ah, yes, yes. Just about make that out. So yes, it definitely... So yes, it definitely looks like we're going to need a bit more juice here. Obviously, 46 volts is not going to cut it. So here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this transformer here, which is going to take the mains voltage and step it down to about 17 volts. And then I'm taking that 17 volts and connecting it to this transformer's 26 volt winding. Kind of like an overly convoluted step down transformer. And also, it's because these two transformers are the first two I came to, so... These are the capacitors I'm going to use as the smoothing capacitors. These are just a couple of ordinary 680 microfarad, 200 volt capacitors, which I've connected together in series, and I've put resistors across each one to keep the voltage across each capacitor the same, and also to bleed off when the capacitors are not in use. So, what am I going to use as a rectifier? Well, we could use a silicon diode, I guess. But how about using a tube instead? Yeah, let's do that. Alright, just gotta wire this lot up, and I'll be back. Right, okay. That's set up. So, got our transformers. Got a rectifier tube. So the output of the transformer. This side, the 240 volt coil, goes into both anodes of the tube or valve, if you want me to say that. Now the cathode goes out 
into these capacitors and the other side of the capacitors goes into the other side of the transformers 240 volt winding which is connected to ground through this wire here that should be enough to make this thing work so I'll turn on the filaments which are connected to my homemade power supply and plug in the high voltage Let's see okay they're lighting up are we gonna see anything on the display this time well, you cannot see it on the camera, of course, because of the way the light is. So I'm just going to adjust the lighting. But this tube here is showing something. Okay, I think that's about the best shot we're going to get. I've played about with the camera's controls, but you can see, you can clearly see now that this one is showing something, and you can just about make out the meter display. So let's see if we can take some voltage readings here. Let's see what our supply voltage is, hopefully without shorting anything, because it's a bit difficult to see in this light. Well, that's responding to that. Okay, we've got about 202 volts there. And on pins 7 and 9, we should have about 55 volts. So let's just probe that. And no, that's a bit too high. We've got 82 volts there, which uh, shouldn't be that high. It should be about 55. I'm just going to see if I can do anything about this terrible lighting in this place, and I'll be back. Okay, I don't know why, but I've tried my other camera, and cameras seem to have a really hard time seeing the display on this tube. But if I just shadow it, you can now see that we've got a couple of bars at the top and the bottom there. And if I touch pin 1, you can see that it does respond. So I'm just touching the gate there, or the grid rather, and that's responding to my finger. Although I think with no signal connected, these two bars shouldn't be out as far as they are. I think they should be more, well, sort of here and here instead of here and here, which is a bit strange, but maybe... Once I connect this up to an audio source, that will sort itself out because it's just floating at the moment, so... I'm just going to go and do that, and hopefully we'll have a working level meter. Okay, so I've built a little circuit here, which takes an audio signal and converts it to a varying negative DC voltage, and I'm feeding that into the tube. And let me just put this in shadow so you can see what's going on. So, as you can see, the bars respond to an audio signal. Now, what I've done right now is I've got my microphone preamp connected up to my tape deck. And I've got the headphone output of the tape deck connected up to this little circuit here. So, every time I speak, you can see the bars respond. Unfortunately, they don't move that much. And I've had to turn the headphone output up as high as it will go. So, what we need to do is find out how to make the bars move further. And also sort out this little problem where they do not recede back as far as they should. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I think I'm onto something here because remember that 470k resistor that's connected across a couple of the pins? Well, I've got a 1 mega ohm resistor here on these crocodile clips here. And if I just bridge that resistor so we get more voltage on the plates, as you can see when I do that, The bars get a little bit longer, so this is without the resistor. And that was with the resistor. So I think if I increase this resistor here, so instead of using 470k, maybe 1 mega ohm would do, that might sort out the little problem I'm getting with this too. Okay, so I've gone and replaced that 470k resistor with 2 mega ohms. I don't know what the voltage is going to be now, so I'm just going to measure that with my meter. So, make sure you can see the meter. Of course, I've got to take into account the resistance of the meter. That's going to pull it down a bit, but... Uh... Yeah, it's gone back a little bit. We got... About 42 volts. And of course, when I speak, you can see the voltage changes, but uh, I'm going to say that's more, way more like it should be. So I think all I need to do now 
is coming with a better amplifier circuit for the gate and this thing should work really really good well it's certainly working a lot better now as you can see full range and it's kicking in time with the music it's a little bit hard to make out but yeah so as you can see there's a lot more stuff on the table now because I've added a preamp stage and I'm gonna put up a schematic diagram of how this is all wired up so don't worry the only trouble is that I think this tube is weak because or the emissions are weak because I should not have to add that amount of resistance I've put two megohms right here to make this thing work the way it should so anyway there we go there is a level meter with an EM84 tube alrighty then let me just make sure my camera is on the best setting so you can see this gorgeous and lovely schematic that I just drew up so you can see it well good you can see it well good alrighty then so I guess you want to see a schematic so as promised here it is this is the schematic of the EM84 level meter circuit I did actually draw this schematic out earlier but um, it is so messed up that um, which one would you rather see this one or this one yeah I thought so so anyways we've got our transformer over here I've only just drawn that as one transformer even though I'm using two transformers back to back I changed a few things on the transformers so now we've got 220 volts here and 300 volts here which seems to work a little bit better so uh, that's why I've done it like that and then there's our input filter capacitors and there's the level meter tube itself is the rectifying circuit to rectify the audio signal so it becomes a, a negative DC yeah I know I'm kinda of cheating a bit here using silicon diodes but what are you gonna do and then there's the preamplifier right there so now I don't have to have the headphone output turned up anywhere near as much as it was before I mean before it had to be on full volume and it wasn't really reading much but now it works a lot better with the headphone volume turned up only about a quarter of the way that's pretty much all there is to it it's simple well it's simple to me anyway although I will restate what I said before I do think that this tube has gone bad because in the datasheet it says I should use a 470k resistor here but I've had to resort to using two mega ohms to get it to function the way it should do so even though the tube is bad or I assume it's bad, I mean it does have some signs of wear and tear it was pretty grotty when I got it so yeah I can assume it's just pretty much at the end of its life but it still works I still made it work which of course you cannot see, let me just adjust this oh well that will do, because you can see it there, it's kind of flickery but yeah but as you can see it's all working absolutely wonderfully I think I just made up a word there. Now I'm just going to play you out. Get out of it. So here is Tube. And now, if this all works, I make new episode of Tube Time on Cool Do Clem's Electronic Workshop. I'm just trying to straighten camera, because I like talking like Radio Fun 232, who says tube instead of tube or tube. Some people get annoyed with the way I pronounce certain words, like tube instead of tube or some people get even more annoying when I call these things tubes instead of valves but screw you because I like to talk American not English okay so I made a little circuit here which is just um, I will put it up 
at the end. Okay, so I made a little circuit here, which I'm going to put up in the video. Um, something. Uh. Uh All right, and there's a room on my bench. Okay, so on the battle scarred ventures. Um, I've just lost my. This side of the output. This side of the 220 volt. Okay, so I made a little circuit here, which is just, um, I will put it up at the end. Okay, so I made a little circuit here, which I'm going to put up in the video, um, something. Uh, okay, so I made a little circuit here that takes an audio signal and converts it to a, um, something. Okay, so I've, I think I'm onto something here, because remember the... Alright. Electro Boom is beatboxing in the background. Alright, there's a lot more stuff on the table now because I've added an... Alright, there's... Alright, there's a lot more stuff on the stage now. Stage? You know, with this overhead camera, I have the strangest urge to talk like Big Clive. I have absolutely no idea why. And we shall hook it up to the mains. No, we're not going to get up to the mains. Of course. Of course. You cannot see it because it's so blurry. I ain't having it. I'm turning into photonic induction. <laughs>